Okay, Madam, Madam uh, President. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good day, good evening, and some of you, I guess we can say good night. It's always a pleasure streaming into your homes on Sunday and visiting with you. As you know, with this C-19 pandemic, I guess this is the new way of visiting one another, or at least checking up on one another. It's always good to see you. On uh, the show with me, I have my uh, our host, uh, Brother Nia Song. We have our chair lady, uh, Madam Pamela, and our illustrious ambassador prophetess, uh, Lisa Parks, as well as um, a guest from uh, Rwanda. I will have um, our chairperson introduced. She's actually not a guest, but uh, I'll have our chairperson or Brother Nia Song introduce her. Nonetheless, I'm hoping that everybody is safe and sound in their homes and uh, everybody's keeping their masks on when they go out and washing their hands constantly and keeping yourself sanitized. As well as when you sneeze, always remember to sneeze in the, um, uh, in the, in, in the fold of your, um, of your hand so that your germs don't spread whether you're COVID infected or not. They always say prevention is better than cure. So I believe if we prevent our germs from spreading to others, this pandemic could be curtailed. Today is not really about COVID, COVID-19, but it's the effects of COVID <clears throat> that we're gonna be talking about, which is the way we are doing our garbage disposal. In other words, the trash, the trash that we have coming out of our homes, maybe in the hospitals, maybe in the restaurants, anywhere where there's trash, you know how much trash we accumulate every day. It doesn't matter what business you're in, whether you're at the house, whether you're in the, in, on the outside, you still have trash you have to uh, get rid of. So prepare yourselves for today for we want to hear from you. If you can join us live right now on Facebook so that you give us your contribution or your thought process on how this garbage disposal is affecting your life or how you are disposing of your garbage. Uh, right now, let me introduce our host, Mr. Nia Song, with our editorial. Good afternoon, good day, greetings to the continent of Africa and welcome to our show, Africa Online Media Corporation's live broadcast every Sunday from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Washington DC time, if I can uh, ex expect myself to say that because it is Eastern Standard Time for many people, but uh, the time is different in Houston than it is in other parts of the world. And uh, we know that our sister Natasha will be coming on. She may be speaking or not speaking depending on her location, but uh, she is part of the show. She is the voice of Rwanda, if I can say that without being contradicted. That said, why don't we get going? August 9th is the 222nd day in the Gregorian calendar. So we have only 144 days left until 2020 is behind us. And if you live in these United States or its territories, we have only 86 days left until the 2020 presidential election, probably on the 3rd of November. What about traveling down history lane? On this day in 1965, Singapore separated from the Federation of Malaysia and gained its independence. This day in 1967, witnessed the first shots in the Nigeria Biafra conflict, a conflict which caused hundreds, if not thousands of deaths. And on this day in 1974, Richard M. Nixon resigned as president of the United States in the wake of the Watergate scandal. And Vice President Gerald Ford took the oath of office to become the 38th president of the United States, the first person to become president without being directly elected. So history's dustbin has a way of preserving artifacts. Richard Nixon's letter of resignation was one sentence long, only one sentence. And it was addressed to the Secretary of State as required by the laws of the United States. And the Secretary of State at that time was Henry Kissinger. Okay, enough of history. We are not looking into history's dustbin today. Rather, 
we are looking at what to do or what to some of us is trash, but to others, treasure. Yes, someone's trash becomes another person's treasure, especially in this day and age when what we want to, what we want is more dominant than what the individual actually has or needs. Somewhere in part two of Coleridge's classic, the rhyme of the ancient marina. Some of you read that in secondary school. And this one is the text of 1834. The ancient marina re regrets water, water, water everywhere, water everywhere. And all the boats did drink water, water everywhere, nor any drop to drink. Why do you think that is necessary here? Yeah. Well, I thought I should bring it in as we engage a topic so dry and yet so rich, garbage disposal. Those words from Coleridge remind us of a soul in despair and humankind in need of salvation. Not the biblical faith related salvation, but salvation from mountains of refuse, heaps of dirt and landfills of refuse and trash and garbage. We in the 21st century may not be as desperate as the ancient marina was, his cry water, water everywhere, but none to drink is a reminder of things so plentiful around us, yet so insufficient to satisfy human needs. Today, we say garbage, garbage, or trash, trash everywhere, and all to make our neighborhoods dirty, unhealthy, and disease infested. Coronavirus and the respiratory disease that it causes, COVID-19, have come to exacerbate the situation and push humanity into wondering where it is headed and to rouse us from slumber and emphasize the importance of basic hygiene, keeping immediate surroundings clean, washing our hands as often as we can, not touching our faces unnecessarily, and maintaining a reasonable social and physical distancing from each other if we must avoid picking up the invisible and deadly virus that sickens and kills our kith and kin. So, as we said already, the ancient marina's quote is very, very important because we have trash, trash, trash around us and we wonder what to do with it. So today, as we engage on this topic, garbage disposal, those words remind us that we need to do something about our environment, about our houses, about our neighborhoods, and about our villages and cities and other street corners. Because whatever we call it, the words are all cousins or synonyms, that is trash, garbage, whatever you call it, they are all, they mean the same thing. Yes, garbage is unwanted material or that which we find only fit to be discarded or that which we no longer has economic value for. And so we toss it aside and somebody else may pick it up or not pick it up. But if they don't, somebody must be responsible. So experts tell us that in the 1880s, material to be disposed of was divided into four general categories. Ashes, that is, derived from the burning of coal or wood, garbage, rubbish, and street sweepings. This scheme of, categoriz of, categoriz of categorization reduced the terms to more specific concepts. So we have garbage being the technical term for the putrescent organic matter, such as kitchen or food scraps, this was fed, of course, to pigs and other livestock in those days, or boiled down in a process known as rendering to extract fats, oils, and greases for manufacturing lubricants or allowed to dry to become commercial fertilizer. Rubbish, a broad category of dry goods, including boxes, but, uh, bottles, tin cans, or virtually anything made from wood, metal, glass, and, and cloth, could be transformed into new consumer products through a variety of reclamation methods. Today, recycling is very much in vogue with households encouraged to separate whatever garbage they generate in their homes. Garbage disposal has also become a community's concern. Days are set aside in different communities for the collection and disposal of garbage. This collective concern is aimed at ensuring that we live in cleaner houses, walk cleaner streets, and enjoy healthier neighborhoods. Such neighborhoods become touristic attractions in themselves, 
thereby helping humanity to live healthier, happier lives. Garbage disposal is and should always be a collective concern because clean neighbors mean healthier populations and healthy people are more productive and a better a blessing for each country. So let us discuss garbage. Let us dispose, uh, discuss garbage disposal. Let us see the pros and cons of keeping or not keeping it, discarding or not discarding it, and its benefits and disadvantages. So what are the benefits of disposing of our garbage? What are the disadvantages of stocking, piling it up? And of course, you and I will be the witnesses on this program. Here we go, I see Evelyn is joining us shortly. And so, Sylvia, why don't I toss the ball back to your court and you play you. in the best way you can. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Um, yes, indeed, uh, the editorial is always on point and uh, alerting or alluding people to the truth of matters and of course the past because some of you were not born when some of these statements were made and now they've come to life with you being alive. And of course, when we read these books, like you said, in school, in high school, is it in college, we tend to start learning things that we did not know before. So indeed, one man's trash is another man's gold. Let me start off first with um, our US of A. I was watching a, uh, I can't remember, was it a video or CNN? Anyway, I watched, I watched it somewhere, I can't remember where, during this pandemic time, where there's a lady in New York, they even nick, they nicknamed her, they, they call her Mama Plastic or something like that, where she goes through each and every tr trash can, where she picks up plastic bottles, anything plastic, so to speak, containers. I think, I didn't see plastic bags, but I've seen a lot of bottles and, you know, like uh, the disposable containers that we throw away. Now, she picks them up and she has carts and carts and carts and carts of them where she takes them to one place and they pay her. Now, what was funny was other people have started following her footsteps and also uh, going in the neighborhoods or in their neighborhoods to start collecting. The reason they did this video is because apparently this woman has made this into her full-time employment. Mm -hmm. She literally does get money. I can't remember how much she makes, but she makes enough to, according to her, I'm not gonna mention a figure because I can't remember, but she makes enough to sustain herself. So on a couple of videos, when she went to try and pick up bottles, she found two guys who had now started collecting bottles in her general area. So she approached them politely and told them that this here area from point A to point B is mine. <laughs> but point C to point D and point E and F is not taken. So, hey, let's work together and let me show you how it's done. And believe it or not, she did. The following week, they did a follow-up on her. And the two guys as well were, I'm not going to use the word boastfully, but let me use that word because it, it, is, it has become a business for them. Now, in the olden days, if I recall, uh, when we were back in Africa, before the garbage cans, and that was in the 60s, the, the garbage cans were there where the, the, what you call that truck, the garbage truck would come, like the way they do it in the US today. We used to have garbage trucks that would come around in the city and pick up the, the garbage and throw it away. Now, should you miss the garbage truck or you don't take your, your trash can to the, to, to, to the gate uh, for the trash man to come in, my mom would dump it out and make what she called compost manure, meaning she did uh, the recycling, separation of recycling with food stuff when we were, you know, when we were younger, and we used to call our mom old fashioned. I mean, why would you sit there and separate garbage? Garbage is garbage, right? So at the end of the day, the gardener would come and take all that rotten food and he'll mix it with uh, some other stuff and put it in the, in the garden and guess what? We had beautiful, beautiful, not GMO uh, vegetables or fruits, but beautiful, fresh, and I'll say homemade, you know, homegrown food. Now, when it came to the plastics, I'm not sure what the government was doing with the plastics, but I'd like to believe they probably were recycling them even though this recycling plastic is new. So on that, I'll pass it over to Ambassador Prophetess Alisa, what's your take on um, on the, the disposal of our garbage here and at home and abroad? Well, I don't know what we're doing with trash here. I can't imagine all the trash that is collected. When I just think about, just look at the trash that's on my block that has actually been sitting there for a week because they keep saying the trash track is coming, so don't put it away. I can't imagine what we're doing with so much trash. Where are we actually putting it and what's being done with it? Now, 
back home on the continent when I'm in Kenya, I just know that they take the trash outside and they just burn it in the front yard. And it disturbed me because the children play outside. The cows are dropping dung outside and the children are all playing in all of this garbage. And then the parents are wondering why they have these ringworms in there. They didn't know what to what call them, but they're ringworms in their head because they're playing with all the burnt garbage and the dung and all of that stuff. So I came back to America wanting to grab up some trash trucks and send them to Africa to collect trash. But like you said, what do we do with the trash once it's collected? Where are we going? And now I do understand that our trash is being sent to Japan, or at least it was being sent to Japan. And Japan has, as of last year, refused our garbage, and they began sending it back on the barge. So somewhere out there in the ocean, we've got barges of trash for America sitting there because um, China or Japan is not taking our garbage any longer. Um, I don't know what we're supposed to do with trash. I don't know what we're supposed to do with plastic. Um, I do know when I go to the UN and I see that long wall talking about recycling and there's all these animals that have gotten the plastic rings around their neck that they're suffocating because the people take their trash and throw it into the river or to the ocean and then these things are getting caught up and our dolphins are being killed and the turtles are being injured because they're suffocating from eating the plastic. So I don't know what to do about plastic to be quite honest. Thank you very much, Prophetess. Yeah, indeed. Um, the plastic has become a detriment to most of our ocean um, or aqua, aquamarine uh, animals, actually, because like you said, it's not digestible, neither is it digestible in, in, in man. And uh, when you go to some of these beaches, especially in Africa, I'm not going to mention the countries that I've been to, but the beaches are infested. I'm not even going to say a little, I'm going to say they're infested with trash whereby instead of you going into the water to enjoy yourself on the beach, you're scared to get into the water because every time the water takes back into the ocean and it comes back out, a whole litany of garbage and it's just like, whoop, it, you know, it hits you in the face. But suffice to say, there are some countries that are actually putting up these recycles, um, uh, um, factories where they're taking all this garbage and transforming it into energy. I will first of all let um, uh, 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 our chair lady speak, then I'll come and pick that topic up uh, as soon as she's done her contribution. And then after that, I will have Mr. William as well say something. Hell, welcome, Mr. William. Uh, thank, thank you Madam so chair. much, uh, Madam President. Uh, this garbage thing is serious, but before I, I weigh in, I would like to uh, welcome uh, Mr. Williams. He's actually um, a member of uh, Africa's Brain Bank Management Team, as we all know, that's our sister organization and the, the team on the continent headed by, uh, uh, um, and I, I'll just say she's unclonable. Uh, my beloved sister, our beloved sister, Mrs. Evelyn Mafani. Uh, Evelyn, meet Mr. Williams. He's one of the uh, mem uh, members of the management team you're gonna be working with. Uh, the others, uh, I, I did not tell them about this show yet. But uh, I want to welcome you, um, Brother Mister, to this show, and you'll get a chance to weigh in if you choose to on this garbage topic, garbage disposal. And I see my beautiful sister Natasha from Rwanda. She used to be on this show a lot with Mister, and I'm glad she's back today. Uh, and um, you know, hopefully she will say something. But uh, to go on this, um, uh, to talk about this garbage thing. A lot of us have heard, you know, the idiom, good riddance to bad rubbish. You know, sometimes people use it to refer to people. Sometimes they use it to re refer to things. There are actually spouses that have used that to refer to each other, which is ridiculous because you are trying to tell people that you were married to uh, a bad rubbish. I don't really think there's good rubbish unless we're talking about this recycled uh, um, plastic, recyclable uh, trash that people are converting to treasure. But there are also companies that use trash. You know, I, I'm not an expert in this and I've not reviewed it, but they convert uh, garbage into fuel. You know, sometimes they synthesize it to uh, ethanol or methanol, uh, methanol, which are all alcoholic products when you hear most of the time with OL, at least we study that in chemistry, you know. Um, so there are people that are converting trash to treasure and from the editorial, uh, I need, need a song, even though I was texting some people, I was not paying too much attention, but I think he differentiated between garbage, trash, and rubbish, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think you were referring to garbage as mostly household products and maybe trash as 
industrial products. I'm not sure I may have been wrong because I was, say, I, I, as most of you know, I'm actually doing the technical part, even though I, I'm not supposed to be doing that. I'll keep doing it until we find a volunteer to stream this thing. But I, I want to share something that I, I saw in the village. Um, you know, uh, our parents, or our forefathers, they had solutions for almost everything. They used their ingenuity. I, I, I used to see them put like the uh, like plantain back in or when they're cooking. The trash that comes from either the peeling of the cocoa yams or the cassava or the plantain, they would not burn it. They would, they would use it and put it in the compost or put it for manure to, to help grow. And it works. Those are organic fertilizers. You know, but how many of us here are doing that? A lot of us they have gardens, but how many times do we think of using the back of a cantaloupe or a mango or um, the stems of a spinach or vegetable instead of putting in the trash and letting the trash person pick it up? How many times do we put, take it to the garden to, 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 to function as a, a fertilizer? So our people on the continent, they have ways of disposing of garbage. Yes, burning the garbage is a very popular uh, 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 option. But there are countries, a, a, a lot of the countries, if not all of them, have garbage pickup. Believe it or not, it may not be in the rural areas, but in the cities, they do have garbage pickup. And one of the things that really bothers me is not in every city or every country. Sometimes our people are just lazy. They will come, especially around the market areas. The trash will be there, but they will not drop the trash in the bin. They'll just drop it on the floor. And that's bad manners. So I'm not putting our people down, we're just calling them out. It's time for us to use that, that uh, uh, bin. But I, I, I also saw one other thing real quick before I, I hand back over to the anchors. I saw a young man in Cameroon that used bottles, plastic bottles to make a canoe for fishermen. Talk about ingenuity. I am telling you, know the bottle is not gonna sink. It floats, right? He used this thing to make, uh, he uses it to make canoes for the fisher people, for the fishermen, and it works and it's very popular. So uh, again, our people, uh, we want them to go to our, our Facebook page, we're streaming live, uh, 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 inbox us or share what, uh, how you are disposing of garbage the right way. And even in the beaches here, uh, Madam President, it's not just in Africa, the beaches here are flooded with trash. I've actually seen it on the news where there's a, a, a young man who developed a whole team now. They go out to the beaches to clean the beaches of trash. So it's not just in Africa, it's here. One last thing I want to mention is the computers. The, uh, 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 electronic waste that the West are, are dumping in Africa. That is got to stop. And Madam Ambassador, I believe it was China that rejected America's trash. I saw that on the news. So over to you, Niasson. Thank you so much, Madam Chair, and uh, welcome back to the program. Uh, Lady Natasha uh, Evelyn, we missed you last week, and brother, uh, they gave his name, I missed it. So welcome to the show, and uh, I think since we are the only men on this show, I'll give you the microphone. <laughs> you, have to say about you have Brother Agrippa too. Brother this. Agrippa is online. Oh, I see Dr. Agrippa is coming in, okay. So let uh, one man I list off before we go back to the ladies. That's Hello, right. Brother. Okay. <laughs> Well, I'd like to introduce myself. I am uh, Ms. Storr Williams. Uh, by profession, I am a behaviorist and therapist here in North Carolina. Um, met Reverend Pam some time ago, uh, back in December, and uh, it's been a very fruitful communication with all the members of the African Brain Bank. Um, I have a passion for uh, working with youth and the populace uh, who are disadvantaged here in the United States and around the world. Um, I'm very interested in how I can be of service, uh, number one. And number two, uh, I know that there are other opportunities for uh, the exploration of how to dispose of uh, the waste products uh, correctly, but also to generate income uh, for those communities that are disposing of it. Uh, there are entities around the world that are figuring out how to do that with uh, less impact on the environment and are also creating fuel systems and fuel cells and things like that that can be useful for uh, communities that are not 
urbanized. So I'm very hopeful and energized to be a part of the process. Brother William, thank you. Sylvia, it's your turn. Yeah. Well, I think, like you said, uh, the women outdo the men. Let uh, brother uh, brother Gripper say something if he has any contribution to make. Then I'll jump in. <laughs> Professor Izozo, you want to mute yourself and uh, chime in? I just I just did. You always drag me to the but I love this group. <laughs> you guys are so powerful. You know, I mean, these women, I mean, you guys top everything. Uh, I saw the topic, um, all these garbage disposals and trash. It brought, my, it brought my memory back to last year, March. I went to Nigeria and I look at myself, I said, is this where I was really born and raised? I was, I was stunned. I mean, my brother drove me from Lagos to Benin all the way to the east, to Enugu. Almost every city that I went to, there were trash on the street. Trash, literally trash on the street. I even see some men even urinating on the street. In Abuja, there is a guy who was carrying vegetable, dumped the vegetable on the floor, on the mud. And I screamed, I, I didn't know my reaction. And people were laughing at me. I said, these people, there is something wrong, especially Nigerian people, there, there is something wrong with us. Upon all the money we have, we can't just take care of little things. That just killed my spirit. And I wanted to leave Nigeria within an hour. I didn't stay more than four days. So this topic is a great topic. And I think it's the one that we can use when, when I went from Nigeria to Ethiopia, I was talking to my friend, Mary Shorowood, Dr. Mary Shorowood. I said, what I saw in Nigeria just killed my heart. That literally trash in every city you go to. Block, the trash will block the main road, even though there are potholes on the road and we have politicians driving around as if everything is normal. He said, well, I have a company in Denmark who can literally take those trash, convert them to energy, convert them, you know, bring job to the community. I will give you the proposal. She gave it to me. I have the proposal right now, so I'm talking to you. Awesome. So my question is that what can we do to move forward? Excellent. So thank you for this very topic. Thank you thank so you. very much. Uh, on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, Sylvia. Yes, thank you so much, Nia So Indeed, uh, Prof, um, the garbage is an eyesore. Uh, it doesn't matter, like uh, Reverend Pemson, <coughs> excuse me, whichever country or whichever part of the world you're in, I guess garbage is garbage because we're consumers. And after consuming, there's always a remnant of something is left behind that you have to throw out. Maybe the container, maybe the cover of the fruit, maybe the cover of the vegetable and stuff like that. The good news is, though, um, I don't want to quote, uh, say it as a quote, but I am aware that uh, there was a team in Congo DRC uh, I think that was last year, I believe August to September, that had approached me because they were looking for funding so that they can put together the, um, a plant that will start processing all the garbage. Believe it or not, as soon as some of these big, big first world countries or nations heard about this, they all ran in asking if they could start exporting their trash to Congo DRC. Now, it shocked me that the gentleman that I was dealing with said they would accept the trash. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. How are you going to accept trash when our country is already so trashy? There's trash everywhere. So he said to me, no, when this machinery starts to process all this trash, trust me, we won't be able to fill it up. He mentioned a, a, a gazillion tonnage number. I can't remember. I'm not a numbers person. But he mentioned to me to say, it will take shiploads and shiploads and shiploads of trash just to make one thing work. So with that being said, if other countries would also mimic the same, or if DRC did go through with it, because I didn't follow up with this gentleman yet since COVID started anyway, I'm hoping that this can be a positive thing you know, for the continent and even here you know, in, in the first world countries, because if we can process all the garbage to energy 
or like uh, Reverend said, uh, we can process the garbage into ethanol, into the fuels. That will be a plus for us. But then again, yes, Reverend Pam, I saw that boat that you're talking about. I was actually in awe when I saw that video. Ah. I said, wait a minute, this is not possible. Then I saw uh, another, I think these were children in Congo DRC crossing, I think it was from Congo, Kinshasa to Congo Brazzaville. They made a raft with the same bottles. Mm -hmm. A whole lot, I think they were uh, uh, water or coca, the, the, the way they did them, they looked like this, like they were knit into each other, yeah. but yet there, there was no space. So it was like this. So when you looked at the raft, it looked like these, you know, like there was something knitted, though I couldn't tell how they put it together, but it is ingenious. It's absolutely ingenious that they're using it like that. But then what happens when that raft dies or when that boat dies? Because then those bottles are not reusable. So we still have to look for a solution or rather encourage our people, especially our young ones who are now the millennia that have the brains of uh, all this new technology, the computers and everything else that you guys are using to come up with something. Let's not kill our planet. Let's not pollute our planet with all this garbage that is being accumulated. Reverend Pam? Uh, yeah, let's hear from Evie. I'll go after Evie. Uh, Evie, uh, yes. Can you unmute yourself? You have to talk. She, she, she actually has posted some stuff in the chat room. So I know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 OK. Um, I'll go after speaking her. from the continent, like uh, Natasha will also add, uh, garbage remains a big problem, a very huge problem. Um, we have like waste, to uh, so call them, in the facilities and hospitals. We call them waste disposal. That one is also challenging because um, there are many health facilities that do not separate the waste to shops and bottles and all that stuff. Yeah. And they don't have incinerators. It is recommended that in every health facility we have incinerators that can handle waste, can manage waste management. But in some health facilities in Africa, they still operate without incinerators which means when you go to these facilities, you can see a heap of trash. It becomes trash now. It's waste-based trash. And it's mixed with other trash from households and you know, within that community. And that is really dangerous because we know the content of hospital stuff, hospital yeah. waste is sometimes really, really dangerous. And that is very unhealthy. Yeah. So we may have infections in our communities which are generated from this kind of in, this um, waste um, in mismanagement, which is not managed appropriately. And for communities in Africa, the main problem also is um, on garbage disposal. It's because we also have very few open markets, huge markets. We have a lot of garbage in our markets. And these are the markets where we buy the food stuff. When you go to a market, there's huge, a lot of it. And the disposal, we see the trucks come to pick them up. When these trucks pick them up, I've worked in many countries in Africa. I realized that they take them to valleys, valleys that have been identified in the community, in the, in the city. They dump them in those valleys, maybe a little out of in the rural part of the semi-urban area of the, of the city. They dump, they just keep dumping into that valley, very deep ones. But when it, the raining season, when the rains come, what happens? The water takes this, this mess, into the streams and right down the 10 kilometers down there a family is taking that water to, the, to their homes as drinking water families are using it to bath to shower with so you can imagine the health consequences the, the effects the negative effect this can be on the bodies of african the children and even on the, the, their lives when they drink some of this so garbage is still a very big problem in africa and i think mm -hmm. rwanda has a good story natasha will talk on that but we also need to know that in the past, we used to really segregate the, the, the trash in house in homes. We would take some and really separate. This one can decompose. What can decompose, we send it to the backyard, in the garden, where we can do our plantations and things. But the, the th things have changed. See, towns have grown, cities have grown. So families only have these backyards anymore. So they also dump them outside. They dump the way the trucks pick them to the same sites where we all uh, dump the trash. And one thing that's surprising and that's, uh, that can hinder the transformation of our garbage is that sometimes when we see garbage, we think it's really much. When you need to convert it, you see that it's too small. That's why I sent a chat to Mr. Williams. 
If by time you have to do and convert to energy, you need a tons and tons and tons. I have a former minister in Sierra Leone who was talking with some guys in Netherlands on how to start such a program in, in, in Sierra Leone. But I think the quantity of trash is not sufficient to run that plant. So if they have to ship it to another country where the plant is, the cost is high. So we need to challenge our governments. There need to be a political commitment. The government must be politically committed, just like we have the Rwanda government, to say, to, to invest on how best we can handle trash. It cannot be done wholly by individuals. We have a few small organizations that are doing NGO work and small, small businesses trying to recycle, but they're doing just a little. I tell you, it's going to be less than 5% of that trash. So we need governments. Our governments must be committed. They must be committed. They must know that trash disposal a garbage is dangerous, it's unhealthy, can call hazards, not only within that community, but 10 kilometers away. It can, that hazard can go beyond that community. Until our governments begin to commit, it's not going to be something which individuals can address on the continent. Thank you. Thank you, Evelyn. Thank you, Evelyn. And uh, you almost took it away from me because I was going to go to take, I was going to take that trip to Rwanda because I know that Natasha was here sometime before and spoke about it. And uh, contrasting Rwanda to Nigeria, where our brother spoke uh, about a short while ago, Natasha, what is Rwanda doing that Africa ought to copy and live by? So good afternoon, everyone. Um, so what, what Rwanda did in 2008, they started burning the plastic bags. Nobody would come into the country with a plastic bag and passes the airport or the border. Any entrance to the country, there were people there to say, we don't need this. You know, it's a small country. They want to keep it clean. And uh, it started that way. I remember I traveled to Rwanda. I had these nice, you know, plastic bags that I had some stuff. They told me it's either you leave your stuff, but you're not taking this in the country at the airport. So I had to put it in my suitcases and then left the bags behind. So that's how it started. And then after they initiated something called Umuganda, Umuganda is something uh, I would say uh, it's coming together in common of purpose. Like it's something that the whole country, whether it's the president, whether it's the ambassador from any country, it's uh, the last Saturday of the month, everybody is cleaning their streets. There is no car moving here and there. Even the police, kids, moms, dads, it's a day where everybody has to clean up. It's it's not a volunteer that you people are volunteering. It's something that a people knows that this is what we do at the end of the month. So even the president participates in Omuganda. So it's something that they have worked. You know, it has become a lifestyle to people in Kigali or, or in Rwanda, where in the villages, when it's time to clean up and all that, they just get in together and work on it. So that is something that I think that even other countries, it doesn't have just to be saying it, they have to get into it and work on it. So that's what has really worked for Rwanda. It's just like it's everybody has to do it, period. You don't drive, whether you're general, whether you're what, you don't, you don't, you have to go do something. And uh, that's what has really worked. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you, Natasha. Don't go away. Stay with us. Yes, Evelyn, yes. I see you posted something. You want to comment on that? Yes, I want to comment. I want to comment. Uh, the new government for Sierra Leone took over in 2018. And they applied the, the Rwanda formula. Awesome. First Saturday of every month, everyone, no, nobody drives. You must have be a medical doctor going for an emergency and their passes, if, even if you're traveling, you have to obtain that pass, otherwise you wouldn't even travel. So it's made the city clean. I walk sometimes on the street, I never see garbage. Awesome. The street that I walk is more than two kilometers, the, the British Same. Embassy Street. Sometimes I go for a walk, no trash. The pathways are clean. It's been going, this is the third year. Awesome. And it's really a 
Can I ask a question? Can I ask Natasha a question? No, Reverend Pam had something to say. Okay. okay. No, Sylvia, ask your question. I'll go after that. Yeah, uh, Natasha, it's this is a brilliant, uh, brilliant uh, uh, information that you you have shared. So, do we know exactly what I believe is the government that is in charge of collecting the refuse, right? The, the 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 garbage. Do we know what what they do with that garbage in the end when when all of you have done this uh, Umuganda, mm -hmm. where they take it to? Is there? Truly, uh, I haven't done the research. But uh, there is uh, some places that uh, they take care of that. So as I say, the Rwanda is a very small country and it has come to their idea to say that we have to clean our homes. Yes. You know, the first thing you clean your home, you clean your community and then you clean the nation. So yes. what they do is that is what they do. I haven't been there in a very long time but uh, they have planned, always they have a plan to do such thing. Next time I'll let you know what they do with that trash. Yeah, so I haven't really been, yeah, been there. Well, and thank I wasn't you, thank ready. You. You're welcome. Thank you very much. You're okay, well. uh, thank You're you, welcome. Natasha. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, a couple of things here. Uh, uh, Prof, uh, we, we're gonna do something about that proposal. You know, this is yeah. the action team. We are here to look for solution and uh, we'll, we'll, you and I will discuss it offline and then we will we'll share it with our brothers and sisters in the diaspora and on the continent and us how they can uh, uh, get involved with it or be part of it. I want to say this, I know uh, several of the times I was in Abuja, they also had it, I don't know what they call it in Nigeria, maybe Prof will help me later, but I, I don't know if it's the last Saturday of the month or what, but the, everybody cleans. It's not a whole day at the time I was there. I think it was half a day where everybody was supposed to clean. But I want to talk about Cameroon. When I was growing up, when we were still under, because I'm from the English speaking part of Cameroon, we had this sanitation masters. You know, they used to dress in a white shirt and khaki shorts with this kind of helmet. You know, they were doing inspections. Everybody had to clean. You know, and even in, in secondary school, you know, Saturdays we're cleaning days until today. I clean every day, but today, 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 Saturday is a major cleaning day for me. Every Saturday, you know, so that has stuck with me from childhood. So, but uh, the French people came and messed up that cleaning thing in Cameroon, just like they mess up everything. I'm not gonna even talk much about them because I, I don't wanna go into politics here. But that, that doesn't happen anymore in Cameroon. But when uh, uh, the English, uh, the British system was still going on in West Cameroon, we had to do that every Saturday. But I, I just wanna say this, you know, um, we are hearing testimonies from Sierra Leone, uh, uh, from uh, Rwanda, Rwanda is very clean. I am hoping that all the other countries will wake up and learn from Rwanda, just like Sierra Leone did. If, if, if the problem with us is that our people don't share good things, they only share negative news. Somebody yes. uh, somebody once said on uh, Trinity Broadcasting Network that uh, bad news uh, goes around the block twice before good news puts, up, puts on its shoes. But on this show, we share good news. So tell everybody, please share this uh, uh, video to help our people, especially during this pandemic. It is very important that we stay clean. I know the pandemic has woken a lot of people up about washing their hands, hand sanitizers, you know, personal hygiene, but let, let's also extend it to environmental care, environmental cleanliness. I, I had the uh, privilege to do a video for a day earlier this year, I think it was early March, I don't remember the exact date. And they were talking about, I also talked about us taking care of our earth and our planet. We need to take care of our planet and the earth. We've seen how the the, 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 the sea creatures die from swallowing plastic. You know, sometimes they can't differentiate between that from food. So let's let's get rid of this uh, 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 rubbish. We don't need it. Nia, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Sylvia, I believe you had a question earlier. Did you ask? Oh, yes, yes, I, I did yes. ask my question. I went yes. to grab some water. So I'm coming, <laughs> yes. I just came back. Yeah, okay. Yes, Brother, Brother Williams, you mentioned something about your readiness to help uh, about, talk about or help uh, people in Africa get rid of trash, if I understood you earlier. Uh, yes. I don't, yeah. How, how do you intend to go about it? Well, uh, 
I have in my in my network, um, I work with a lot of uh, outside of where I work presently as a behaviorist and therapist. Uh, prior to that, I've worked with a lot of hedge fund companies and uh, financial ent entities. Uh, one of their uh, interests is social entrepreneurism. And so I'm trying uh, to facilitate that dialogue, obviously with the African Brain Bank and the partnership therein to get uh, more social entrepreneurism and monies towards these causes. Um, I have had the, had the honor of meeting a lot of uh, wealthy people um, through the discourse of my work in the music industry. And uh, prior to that, uh, working with a lot of people who have uh, entree to money, there's people. There are people who want to be philanthropic, and that's part of what I do is connect the dots with people who have money. And so I'm, I'm you know, building a dialogue around this topic is something that I I hope to be able to do. Thank you so much. Dialogue, dialogue is very important. Yes, uh, ever and uh, no. Uh, Natasha. Oh, yeah, yes. Natasha, I see I, your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I just wanted to answer her question. What they do with that garbage. So Rwanda has uh, created, has made garbage disposals in different areas of the country. So whatever area you are, there is a garbage disposal that cars will take that garbage to that place exactly. Okay. Yeah, All I right. just asked a friend. Yeah, but we don't know what they do with the garbage, correct? Do we know whether this garbage is reprocessed or they, they, they bury it, they burn it? Do we know what the end product of that garbage is? You see, my interest is, my interest is not taking the garbage from one area and then storing it in another because it's not solving our problem. We, we need to know because with what you have explained right now, this is something that I need to also start pushing and advocating for in the yeah. different uh, countries that I, you know, I associate myself with. And uh, with the arm that I have right now, I have a re very long arm to reach a lot of different um, you know, leaders in, in a different countries. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the benefit that Rwanda is getting like Reverend Pam uh, just reiterated and then Sierra Leone copies, um, I, I mean, mimics not really a copy, but they mimic what Rwanda is doing. And we're seeing according to Evelyn, the end results are phenomenal. Now we want clean wherever we are. So my concern or rather my, 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 my um, I'm being inquisitive as to find out what do they do with the uh, uh, massive tr uh, trash, garbage that they put together. I just wanted to know, is there a, a mechanism, a process, what are they doing with it? Because if I'm speaking about this trash to another country, they're gonna ask me, okay, then what's the end product? You see what I'm saying? So yeah, I need to yeah. be equipped with myself to say, okay, once they collect it from A, B, C, D, D, cut towns and they take it to Timbuktu, in Timbuktu, they either convert it to, to energy, they convert it to ethanol or whatever, they burn it, they, I, I don't know, but I just wanted to know the end, uh, the end result of this. I'll get you the information at the moment we are done with this meeting, I'll have the information for you. Thank you I so very much. God bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Your Excellency, um, the Ambassador, yeah, as Sylvia, uh, I was turning to the Ambassador, she needs to unmute herself. Yes, actually, um, I just yeah. wanted to also uh, reiterate on something Her Excellency said earlier on. Is she still on? I don't see her. She's on. She's on, but oh, she not is, okay. unmuted. Yes. Okay, um, Your Excellency. I'm having technical difficulties. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, Your Excellency, I heard you mention cow dung a few, uh, 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 in the, when you just began to speak. Did I get you correctly? Yes. Denise, All right, now, cow dung in, some, in the in, uh, southern part of Africa. Let me just share something with you. I don't know if my brothers and sisters from West Africa do the same, but I'm hoping it's not news to them. I remember growing up, you know, the cow dung was fuel for the house, okay? Oh. My grandparents would send, well, I never picked up any cow dung. I was raised in the city, but I would see my cousins, uncles, and aunts on my mother's side, who was originally from Zimbabwe, where they would collect this cow dung in baskets, these huge, huge, huge baskets. Now, believe it or not, they would take this cow dung, mix it with grass and I don't know whether it's clay or sand, and they would use it to build their huts. Right. Now, once these huts are built, I swear it doesn't smell. No, 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 it doesn't smell. No, it does not. No, not at all. The huts become so beautiful inside. You can literally, I mean, it's like cement. 
-hmm. but it's not cement because it's it gives you such a smooth fin a finish you know in the house now instead of having chairs you know like one individual chair the way each of us are sitting they would build a bench around the house you know the house is around you understand right. that so they'll build a bench around the house where any visitors that came, you all just sit around the, the bench of the house and then the fire is in the middle of the house. When grandma wants to make fire, she would take that same dry, 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 dry uh, cow dung, uh, put a, a few sticks of uh, wood or whatever grass, strike a match and boom, the thing lights up. But there's no smell. Mm -hmm. there's no smell. So it is a fuel. And in my, my line of uh, life that I have uh, grown up in, it was also used as a cement, or at least as an agent to hold the sand, the clay, the soil together to build our houses back in Africa. Like, I just wanted. Wow. Yes, I do know that I've I've seen the dung being used for making bricks and you know building houses, but for the, especially when I'm in Kenya, I don't see it in Uganda unless I'm in, in Bali is where I've seen them use it for a brick. But in Kenya, where I've been, they just it's just on the ground. Collecting it, there's no making anything useful out of it. So, okay, oh. thank you. Go ahead, Ambassador. Yeah, so. Okay, there's a, there's a silence there. Uh, Professor Agrippa. Yes. After all what you've heard, what else do you have to say about uh, garbage and so on? Not just in Nigeria, but I believe you've traveled to other places. Uh, how can we teach the Nigerian to? put the trash away in a more responsible way? I think uh, Reverend Pam just uh, uh, hit, hit it on the head. We should find a solution. Talking about it is not gonna do anything because they know that they have all the trash and even the young ones, they are accustomed to it. It's just when you eat banana, you throw it on the floor, on the road. So I think we need to come up with a solution. I have a proposal in my hand, Reverend Pam is gonna review it. And I think if we review it, if we can do something about it, which we can extend it to the, to the whole continent. That, that, is, that is my proposal. We're gonna do something about it. I, I believe in getting things done. I yes. like to get things done. So we are gonna do something about it. Good. I think Brother Mister has a question. He posted it on the chat box. So oh, okay. Brother Mister, do you wanna unmute yourself and Ask your question. question. Yes, my general question, as I po posted, is, uh, are there a scientific, uh, is, is there a scientific arm <laughs> that is investigating uh, plastic eating bacteria and mealworms? Uh, there is reports that mealworms have been um, engineered, I guess, to eat plastics as well. And there are some bacteria that have been recently found that can dispose and break down metals. Are there any scientists within the continent or scientific arms or agencies within the continent exploring those ideas? Well, uh, so I'm glad you, you are asking that I'm posting it. So we wanna reach out to uh, the continent. If you are a scientist on the continent and you're, you, are, you are doing this, we wanna hear from you, please. Uh, uh, go to our website, www.africaonlinetv.org or email us at info at africaonlinetv.org or you can send us uh, a message on our Facebook page at Africa Online TV. Thank you, Brother Mr. Back to you, Niaso. Thank you very much. And uh, at this point, I think uh, Reverend Pam, we're almost getting, okay, we have seven more minutes. Seven minutes. Time to take one more question. Uh, Sylvia, did you have something to say before I go ahead? Uh, yes, I, uh, uh, for the question that the gentleman asked, um, with your permission, I would like to post that uh, there's a couple of forums that I belong to, uh, Reverend Pam. I know it's not Africa Online Media Corporation Forum, but I would like to share that with, um, with my other, uh, um, uh, how you call it, forums. So is it possible, Reverend Pam, for you to share that chat with me via WhatsApp so I can send it out right away? Maybe somebody can respond. I, I, I would, um, let me see. Okay, I'll try. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right, that being said, Natasha, I see you're getting cold up as the conversation goes. You should, you should be getting warmer rather. So please, <laughs> speak, speak, up, speak more about garbage disposal, either in Africa or even where you live. I mean, I know you're out here in the West. Uh, how is it punished? Oh, no, 
how do they penalize people who throw trash anywhere, everywhere? Should there be a penalty for it? You're, you're not you have to unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Unmute. Sorry. <laughs> okay. 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 I no, unmute yourself. Back, unmute again. No, that was yeah, okay. okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Do we penalize yes. people yeah. in garbage trash anywhere in the house? In Rwanda, yes, they do punish people. If the police sees you, if anybody sees you, and the police is everywhere. So if they see you doing that, you, you're punished. There is amount of money you charge to pay. And uh, that has made everybody not to do anything like that in town or in, in villages, really. I've had an opportunity to travel like in the villages. It's not just in the city in the cities, but also in villages or small cities, everything is really clean. I was really surprised with how even in the, in the villages, how they are keeping up with the cleanliness of the city. So it's, it's beautiful. So like I said, it has just become a lifestyle. Okay. That, that is very good because if in Nigeria, a policeman, you know, caught you, give them a naira, they will let you go. <laughs> in Rwanda, it's not like that. It doesn't. Exactly. Like that's that's I, say, I love garbage. that. It's very good. That's another garbage that needs. That's to be another done. garbage. Yes. So I see, uh, Evelyn, you posted something. You want to present that to us, so that everybody can get to hear what. Doctor Goji is on. on. No, yeah, yeah. I see, Doctor. I'm not Goji. sure it's new posted. Somebody posted something really big. Not me. No, that's uh, Mr. Williams. That's Mr. Williams. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Doctor Goji, you are welcome. Meet yourself and join the conversation. Dr. Ogoji? He needs to unmute himself. If okay, not, while, while we're waiting for Dr. Ogoji, I wanted to comment, say something. You know, the reason why the uh, you want Rwanda formula worked and it's working is real alone because it started from the top. That's leadership. So, like uh, Brother Agrippa said, if you bribe a policeman, they, they, will, get, they will let you go. The police, they, they need to champion this. It has to stop. It start from the top. I know the secondary school I went to, that actually secondary school exists in Nigeria. It's called Queen of the Holy Rosary Secondary School. Um, if you drop trash on the floor, if you go to that campus, you will not see a piece of paper on the floor. If you do, they will, they will put something around your neck and you need to carry it and say you drop trash or you litter, which is very <laughs> embarrassing. So the girls from that school, we don't, we don't, we don't litter. But I, I want to give the next three minutes to Dr. Ogoji. Uh, Dr. Ogoji, it's all yours. We're talking about garbage disposal. And from the top of the hour, we'll be talking about the event. OK. okay. Hello. Yes. We're hearing you. Same. Welcome. Oh. Well, yeah, garbage disposal is, um, is part of sanitation. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very important part of life because we create more trash than we think. Um, if, we, if there's no effective means of disposing trash in any country or environment, that community is bound to, to suffer or pay the consequences in the long run. Um, it's more important in Africa because we generate a lot of wastage in Africa, from especially in Nigeria with pure water, the plastic from pure water, the line on back and things like that. Um, bottled water, all those things are all garbage that need to be disposed. Um, it's an area of um, health care or human living that has not been exploited. Um, I'm hoping that the leaders down the continent will look at what happened here. Um, 20 years ago, all the garbage men were usually black men um, because they were paying them peanuts and um, paying them a minimum wage. At one point in time, they couldn't find enough people to do garbage uh, type of work. Now, in the U.S., garbage men are paid more than more, almost two times the minimum wage for that job. That's true. So for you to be a garbage, a garbage man, you cannot even get a job. You have to really apply and apply and apply. And then with that, um, the companies become, um, you have many more companies that dispose garbage in every city. And then, of course, we make um, the people pay for garbage. You know, I mean, if you live here, you know that you have to pay for your garbage. It's a monthly fee, you pay, your garbage is gone, you don't pay, your garbage stay with you. Um, so 
I don't know how we can re-emphasize the need for us to develop that part of the of uh, one human living, economy, and sanitation. Because one, you make the environment clean, two, you create jobs, and three, you, you generate wealth to a thousands and thousands of people. So it's very important, it's a very nice topic. I hope one day we'll get to that level too. Okay, I think Reverend Pam, we're coming up to the top of the hour. You take the minutes and then uh, wind down to the top of the hour. And it is, it is the top of the hour. We are at the top of the hour. Thank you so much. Dr. Ogoji, thank you. I want to thank everybody. We have a great panel, uh, you know, today. And um, hopefully we'll see everybody every Sunday. Uh, but but I, I agree by these topics. They just come as the Lord lays them in my heart. So I'm glad you're enjoying them. We've been doing that for four years, you know. So uh, I, I, I'm, I'm just excited about this team because we are the power team, the action team. Uh, I want to um, I want to share something that I shared with our our team uh, pre-show. This coming week, there's an acronym that the Lord laid in my heart four years ago. It's called stew, and it has nothing to do with the African stew with tomato and beef. It doesn't. The acronym is stew. S stands for social media. T stands for transportation and telecommunication. E stands for energy, electricity, and W stands for water. Yes. It's cost you. I came up with that acronym, and you're welcome to use it. But the, our event is, is, is September the 6th, and we're going to be discussing stew leading up to that event, ending with water. But we want to tie it to our event. So instead of just talking about social media, the advantages and disadvantages of social media, we're going to talk about how we're going to use social media to promote Operation Borehole 55. Uh, uh, brother, Mister, this is your first time on the show, but I had hinted you about our team on the continent that is going to be executing this uh, project for Africa Online. You know, Operation Borehole 55 is referring to a water project, a, a digging boreholes in uh, the 55 nations of the uh, continent. There are 50. There are more than 55 nations in Africa. There are 60 something, but we are talking about the AU members. Africa Union members, there are 55 nations, uh, member nations. And we're not gonna start with all 55 unless uh, somebody writes us a big check, then we can do all of them simultaneously. But we're gonna be starting with uh, rural areas in the neediest countries and com a computer will select the country. I, I got a question while we're on this show that what happens if somebody donates money and then the borehole is not dug in their country? It depends on how much you donate. If you donate $50 or $100, we're not going to come dig a borehole in your country. $100 cannot dig a borehole. Uh, we've gotten a quote uh, because the quote that we have is about 20 something, uh, 20 grand, and we're trying to get some other quote. Uh, but uh, uh, Gripa or uh, Sister Stevia, if you guys can reach out to Brother Ike to give us another quote. And we are also requesting quotes from other engineers on the continent. The quote where we got had to do with everything, not just the borehole, but also the solar pump that goes with it. We don't want to dig a borehole and they're not able to pump it because the government uh, uh, own electricity or the uh, electrical power in that country is not working. So we want it to not just be attached to a solar pump, but uh, a pump that is going to be taken care of. So if you are donating, uh, we have the, the criteria on there. I was hoping that our chief CFO will be on the show. I don't know if she's just tied up in church or not. But if you donate uh, more than $5,000, you, you can actually uh, select where you prefer for the water to go. Please don't give us $5,000 and ask us to put water in your compound. This is the purpose. If you want to put water in your company, you can do it yourself. You don't need Africa Online to do it. This is about helping those rural communities that don't have water. You know, so on, on the on the uh, uh, the donation levels or sponsorship levels start from two, it starts from two fifty to twenty five k. For details, you need to go to our website and see what the sponsorships come with. It's from bronze level through emerald. Emirate being more than 25K, our website is www.africaonlinetv.org. The details are there. But I want to take a minute and talk about this. And our team, you know, each person will take a minute and talk about the, the need for this water. 
we want everybody to be part of this um uh, part of this 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 program i'm sorry i was getting a text about this same topic what i'm talking about we want everybody a lot of us brush our teeth and we leave the tap running I, I was guilty of that until i got a letter from the city of houston advising us specifically to conserve water and they pointed out to running water while you're brushing your teeth so it's a it's a it's a global problem. It's a bad habit that most human beings have. Because of that letter, I stop running the water while I'm brushing my teeth. I turn it off and then I'll turn it back on. We waste water. All of us on this show, most people that are gonna listen to this show have access to water. What about those that don't have access? So we go about our daily life like there's no problem, but I want to encourage everybody, especially Africans and people of African descent, if you have a job, make a donation. If you don't have a job, so out of your need, consider this a seed to bless somebody out of your need. It, it, it doesn't matter how much you give, it's gonna go, 100% of it is going to Operation Borehole 55 because water is life. At this point, I wanna uh, uh, give uh, the airtime to uh, Sister Sylvia, who is also the in charge of the uh, 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 PR, I mean the publicity for this event. And then uh, Nia Song is going to speak, but Agrippa, and then we'll let uh, Sister Evelyn, who is uh, our administrator on the continent, has been doing a fantastic job to talk. Uh, she will go last, and then we'll have uh, Sister Natasha and Brother Mr. Way in. O over to you, um, um, Sister Sylvia, and then Nia Song, you, you will go after Sister Sylvia and say it in, in French. Thank you so very much. Yes, indeed, Operation Boho 55, Water is Life. We've been at this topic for the past two, three, four we, uh, uh, Sundays now, because for sure, without water, we cannot survive. Without clean water, we cannot be healthy. So our venue for this uh, Operation Boho 55 will be via Zoom, uh, 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 which will be provided by our organization for y'all to participate in. Uh, our date for this virtual fundraiser is September 6th, 2020. And the time is 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. In other words, East Coast time, or like Nielsen says, Washington DC time. Uh, who is eligible to be part of this? It's everybody. We've all been hit by COVID, right? And we all need water, like Reverend Pam says, you use water, you let it run while you're brushing your teeth and the water's just going, 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 and others are going to the streams to get filthy, dirty water. Now, she briefly touched on the donations, what the donations are, but I have to expound on them so that you'll understand what, what happens or what category you are in if and when you donate a certain amount of money. Now, when you donate $250, it's considered bronze, okay? And then if you donate $1,000, it's under the gold label then $5,000 is executive gold. For the, between 250 and 1,000, you're going to ask me and say, well, what am I gonna get for giving you all that money? Well, you're not giving it to me, you're giving it to the borehole. So you will be able, we will be able to put your name on our website for a year uh, because our website is a very live and active website where people visit and uh, you know, want to see what we're doing or what topics or what projects we are running on or running by. So you will be on our website and uh, throughout the year, you know, your uh, logo or if you're an individual, whatever you send us to put on there, you know, you'll be on there. Then uh, the two, two and a half, uh, I mean, 2,500 uh, gold, I mean, uh, the, the gold uh, donation that you are going to give or get, going to present to uh, the Operation Boho 55, as well as the 5,000 executive gold mark will give you, you will be on our website for the year. Reverend Pam, is it one year or two years for the five? I forget. You mean 5,000? Yes, 5,000, yes. Uh, it's more than, I think it's three years. Let me, it's okay. actually uh, on the forum. Let me see if I can I share that on the forum. Okay, thank you. So okay. let, her, let Madam Chair correct me on that one. Open it, it's on the forum so you can read it directly. The 5,000, uh, would give you uh, naming rights on the boho. Not that is a, a, um, two years. Okay, so it's two years. I was right. Okay. Yeah, you thank might you. want to open it on your phone so that you can just read. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So on uh, the five thousand, like uh, Madam Chair said, you will be on our website as well as your name appearing on the boho. The website will be a duration of two years, 
where we will keep your name, your information, advertising you and what your business is or does. Uh, we may also uh, accommodate a commercial for you on the day of um, uh, our, day, uh, our fundraiser, which is September 6th. Then we go to 10,000 is platinum, 20,000 is diamond, 25,000 plus is emerald. Now, all the high, high numbers that I have mentioned encompass everything that the first, second and third and fourth get, okay? Plus your name will appear on the boho. And like, I just learned something from Madam Chair right now. If you donate, let's say anything from 20 and above, you have the choice to ask us, can I have this boho with my name put in uh, Timbuktu? Can I have it put in uh, Egypt? Can I have it put in Harare? You know, something like that. That is a privilege and an honor that you will get from us because you have almost completed one boho by yourself. And truly it's only fair that we let you choose your country of choice where it's going to go. So 20,000 through 25,000 or 20,000 and above, should I say, let me not limit. Uh -huh. So please donate generously. We will be transparent. Uh, our website, which is Africa Online Media, will always, always Africa post what- AfricaOnlineTV.org. Uh, I'm sorry, AfricaOnlineMediaTV.org uh, will always, always, always post whatever we're using the money for. Because somebody had sent me a question and said, how do I know that my money is being used for this boho? Or how do I know when my money is going to be spent for this boho? So there will be transparency, like um, Madam Chair said, our CFO um, is not available uh, for some reason or another. She's probably very busy. And uh, we just want to inform you guys. So we have also gotten out some payment uh, handles where you can donate starting today. You don't have to wait until September 6th to do this. The more we get now, the easier it will be for us on uh, the actual September 6th uh, fundraising day. So on the Cash App, we have the uh, dollar sign, Africa Online, one word. There's no space between the dollar signs and Africa Online. It's the dollar sign, Africa Online. And then for the Zelle, or some of you call it Zelle, Z-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, it's chairperson at africaonlinetv.org. Chairperson is one word. Chairperson at Africa Online TV, as in television, dot org. As for PayPal, we have it at donate, D O N A T E, at Africa Online TV, as in television, dot org. Donate at Africa Online TV, dot org. Then for more information or for further information, please visit our website at www.africaonlinetv.org, www.africaonlinetv.org for more details. Now, there, if there are any of you that are listening right now and you have any questions, please feel free uh, to post them. Uh, Madam Chair has her eye on the questions that you all are posting so that you can also be a part of this. If you want to be a part of this fundraiser, please feel free to contact us because we need the help, we need more people to assist to push this. And we have sent stuff out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, I think as well as LinkedIn, those, those of us who have LinkedIn uh, accounts. Please be on the lookout and share, share, share. It doesn't hurt to share. Don't be picky and say, oh, she doesn't look like she's got money. The people that don't look like got money are the ones who've got a lot of stashed money away. And the ones who look like me, like I got money, don't have a dime to my name. So don't I be reject that in the name of Jesus. You have money. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying, because sometimes we judge books by the covers. You see what I'm saying? In other words, maybe let me say, do not judge a book by the cover. But just to share a little bit of a testimony, last Sunday when we had this program, I have a seven and a 10 year old granddaughter uh, and son. Uh, Brother Ni, when we finished the, the, uh, the show, I was going downstairs because I was at their house. Right now I'm in Dallas, by the way. She comes, uh, comes to me very emotional talking about, she had a $20 in her hands. And she says, I watched the show that you just did. I said, what show? She says, the one about the water. And I'm very upset that those children in Africa don't have clean water. I mean, I was dumbfounded for a minute. I said, wait a minute, what does a seven year old know about water? But she was very vehement about her donation. So 
she's donating her twenty dollars. I tried to tell her, give me ten, and you keep the ten. She says no. I want to give this ten dollars to those children. How many boreholes can this twenty dollars build? And I told her many boreholes. It will go a long way. Shortly thereafter, her brother comes through too and says he wants to donate his ten dollars. So if children can put uh, me, grandma, to shame who hasn't donated yet, what more of some of us who are out there? Come on, man. The children are giving up their little allowances, 10 and $20. That's a lot of money for them because they like to buy toys, they like to buy candy and other stuff. So parents who are out there, including myself, let's get to this website. Let's get to donating so that we, we, we start providing those boreholes for our families in Africa so that the children also can enjoy their childhood instead of peddling water 24 seven, coming back and forth from the stream or from the well. Nyeso? Thank you, Sylvia. Merci beaucoup, madame. Uh, et Natasha, ne pas pas parce, parce que je voudrais que tu complètes ce que je veux dire. Uh, Africa Online Media Corporation organise le, 20, le 6 septembre prochain une collecte de fonds publics par Internet, of, uh, bien sûr, pour sponsoriser l'opération Borho 55 en Afrique. Le but est de collecter de l'argent et construire des points d'eau uh, dans les différents pays africains. Donc, nous vous invitons de nous joindre le 6 septembre pour cette opération Borho 55. Uh, so, uh, Natasha, I think you were going to help me complete that in French, but you muted <laughs> instead. Okay, so let's see where we go from here. Uh, I think our brothers have been listening. Yeah, Natasha, oh, there you are. We need to hear are. from Evelyn. We need to hear yeah. from Evelyn and yeah. then yeah, Evelyn. Natasha Sorry. and Prof and Mr. Please. OK, Natasha, rapidement, en français, si tu peux. Merci. Opération Borehole 55. OK, je sais que je t'ai pris de coup, mais pas de quoi, <laughs> pas de problème. Après, tu toi pour la semaine prochaine pour dire quelque chose en français concernant l'opération Borehole 55. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, the ambassador was there, or was it Evelyn? OK, Evelyn, go ahead. Yeah, um, from the continent, I'm speaking from the continent, from Sierra Leone specifically. Uh, we've been trying to mobilize volunteers across the continent, on every continent, every uh, nation. Right now, we have representation Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Uganda, uh, Somalia, Sudan, uh, Kenya, and Cameroon. Awesome. So we, 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 we're going to share this link with telling our brothers and sisters so that we can also donate. And not only donate, we want to be participants, we want to participate as many as possible, many Africans on the continent to participate on that day so that when the execution is happening, you know, we should be able to have volunteers on the ground to speak for the organization. Amen. Awesome. That's wonderful. Awesome. Oh, can I just say something? Sure. I, know, I know she's shy, but I, I, I think she just turned off her camera. Evelyn was the first donor on the GoFundMe. So she is walking the talk. She's not just talking. Not only did she and her team put together the flyer, that flyer was made in Sierra Leone, in Freetown. She made the first donation. So everybody on the continent, you have a job, you know, you have money, donate. I, well, we're done with all this consumer mentality. We need to solve this problem. We are bringing this water to you. So I needed to say that. I'm sorry. Let's hear from the, <laughs> the rest of the team. Dr. Dr. Ogoji, we need to hear. Dr. Ogoji had already committed. So Dr. Ogoji, please. You know, give me something to dance about today, Dr. Ogoji. I don't know why your, your camera is not on. Please, Dr. Ogoji, I need that check for 50 grand. You know, Dr. Ogoji, please unmute yourself. Yes, there you go. Just unmuted. I can hear you. Yes, hello. Yes, we're hearing can you. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 I mean, I am, I am on board. I will donate. Uh, just count on me. Okay? Yes. Count on me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Doc. Well, Sorry. thank you, everyone. Um, I think all the hard work has been done. The only thing we need to do now is to share with our contact and our friends to make sure they donate. So that's what we're going to do. Evelyn, thank you very much for the work you're doing on the continent. That energy is infectious. Yeah. We th I thank all of you. So we're going to do our best between now and September 6th. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. I have a question for Dr. Ogoji. Dr. Ogoji, as a physician who also practice on the continent, could you share, uh, you know, tell our people why they should donate, both the people on the continent and in the diaspora? 
because there are healthcare facilities without water. I know that I don't think you ever worked in a clinic where there was no running water, especially not now in the US or when you were in the UK. So Dr. Ogoji, can you imagine your colleagues on the continent, uh, about 20% of the facilities don't have running water. So let's hear from you and then we'll go to Brother Mister. This is important. We are spending the rest of the time talking about this event. Well, um, there's a general perception back home that the hospital is a stinking place. Hospital smells. We know that. That place smells, that place smells, that place smells. What is smelling? No water. So you can imagine where you are working in a hospital in Nigeria or in Cameroon, in another African country. You have to fetch water with buckets to do things. You have to fetch water to wash the linen. You have to wash fresh water to sterilize stuff. That is a no-no. And um, I have this story I always share. One of my very good colleagues came back, went to the UK and studied medicine for many years, specialized, got a job in a teaching hospital in Nigeria. Teaching hospital, that was years ago. Still happening today. They have running water, but the water was not reliable. After counseling three or four of his surgery because there's no water to sterilize the equipment, no water to wash the linen, he quit the job, said, this is not what he wants to do. I want to open his own practice and then sack a borehole and then start taking care of patients. So um, water in healthcare facility is it's, it's life. Without water, there's bound to be infection. Um, there are a lot of very wonderful doctors in Africa that do all sorts of wonderful surgery. They will do the surgery, they need surgery, the patient will get well, but within three, four days, the wounds become infected and become complicated and die from infection. Um, not only do the patients get sick and die, family members coming to visit will take infection from the hospital back to the houses and then people will die from infection. And then that boils down to even homes, you know. Why are we still talking about diarrhea diseases? In Africa in general, diarrhea diseases is one of the biggest killers of children. Children die every day from diarrhea diseases. Why do they die? There is no potable water. They eat, they, 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 they poop without washing their hands. They eat without washing their hands. The family tries to use a bucket of water to wash the clothes, wash the diaper, and then feed the kids. So infection, infection, infection. If we can solve the water problem in some communities, that will save thousands of kids every year from dying. Awesome. So that's one thing. So infection, infection will be prevented both in the community and in the hospital. Thank you. Brother Williams, over to you before we go to the ambassador. Oh, I do thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this forum today. Um, also, I would like to encourage those members in the diaspora, uh, for which I am a part of, uh, the African-American community, but also I have heritage in Jamaica, as well as my grandfather was from Kingston. Uh, I am encouraging all persons to find their humanity to donate to this cause. Uh, it is an important cause because not only is water a part of every human's existence, it's a part of our planet's existence. Yeah. So I, I'm encouraging uh, all who are hearing the voices on this forum to donate to this cause and not just on the September uh, date, but also continuously throughout the year. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much. Your Excellency, good yes. things always come from the ladies and being the ambassador, <laughs> I know you have a great lot of good things to say. Over to you. I agree with Mr. William. We're not just going to be donating on September 6th or leading up to September 6th, but I agree that we should be donating constantly. I have already made a I just want to add that we don't have to just make one donation. You can make several. Awesome. If you want to make a large donation at the moment, just make a little donation now, and then next week or next month, make another donation so that it adds up. I too am very concerned about the lack of water in Africa, the lack of clean water. I've seen the children walking with no shoes in the hot sun, carrying a bucket of water on their head. It is, it is horrible and it makes my heart bleed. So I'm very excited about this process. I'm very excited about this project. I'm all on board and I 
degree that in order for us to get people to donate we ourselves must donate first so yeah. they see that we have donated to something and that we believe in what we're talking about how are you gonna get other people to buy into your project if you've not yet sewn into it my father in the gospel always says you've got to have some skin in the game no matter how poor you are you've got to have some skin in the game because that's when it comes real to you it can't just be oh wow they're going to do for us we're getting away like you said we're getting away from that mentality we're getting away from what them old missionaries came to africa and told them you're poor don't do anything we'll do everything for you we bind that in the name of jesus and we Amen. everyone will have something to sew in to operation borehole 55. Awesome. Thank you very much. And back to the discussion on garbage disposal. Sylvia, I know we're going to go back there to take a round of the table right. to have uh, our participants today uh, chip in their last words on garbage disposal. And I'm going to start from the uh, my right on the screen here. I see um, Natasha, maybe I'm calling on you too much, but I want to start with you. Your last word on garbage disposal very humbled to be a part of this team of, of uh, smart women and men. Uh, thank you. I think what, what we should do is to, you know, raise the awareness of what it is to, to be clean, to live in a clean environment, and then to extend the message to all those people out there and then see what we can, we can do about it. Just extend the message and, you know, preach the word. Thank you very much. Dr. Ogoji? Well, um, garbage is, is sickness. There's garbage, there's illness, and illness means death. Um, the ELA will start keeping our environment clean. That will go a long way to make people healthy and become more productive in life. So let's clean up the environment. Thank you, Evelyn. Um, <laughs> I think on the continent, um, there have been a bit of progress the last few years in most nations with Operation Keep the Nation Claim. We need, what we need now is political commitment on the part of each government. It needs to come from the top. They need to be really committed so that we can continue the journey that has begun in most African nations. We know that we are challenged because of urbanization. Many cities are now very congested and it's challenging to some of them. But if our governments are committed, we know we shall make a difference. Thank you. Your Excellency, the Ambassador, please, your last word. Cleanliness is next to godliness. If everyone would just pick up one piece of trash, one bottle, drop it in the recycle bin, drop it in the trash bin, Others will see us doing that, and then we will have a cycle of people picking up. We don't have to say, oh, my child didn't put it there, or I didn't put it there, but if we just pick up, because cleanliness is next to godliness. Thank you very much, Professor Agrippa. I think um, Evelyn just said the right thing. Our government needs to be held accountable, because they are the problem. When we will have a good government, just like what they're doing in Rwanda, if every African country can do that, some of these problems will be solved easily. Now you don't have to take individual like you, me, to come to say, let's bring garbage disposal. These are some of the basic a government supposed to give to their citizen. So Evelyn, thank you for, for pointing it out. We should not shy away from holding our African government accountable. Right. We're, not, we're not shy away from holding American government accountable. So what should we? They take our money and put it all over the world. They take it to Switzerland. They put it in New York, in Los Angeles. One individual person, how can you take a country money to, we can have used this money to put borehole, to make sure we have a, a good environmental in the continent. So I'm holding the continent, the, the government accountable. Those are the people we should put our hands on. Nigeria has enough money to make sure that we have clean water, in the whole continent. They can do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry to be so. No, 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 don't be sorry. Thank you. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much, Professor Agrippa. Brother Williams, yes. the last word on garbage disposal. Well, from my perspective, garbage disposal 
is a solution uh, solution oriented construct. We can find solutions if we want to. For far too long, many people have chosen not to find a solution. They'd rather pass on the waste pro products to other countries. Um, as Reverend Pam has uh, so eloquently pointed out, it's an imperative for the people of Africa and the African diaspora to solve this problem. Um, and I want to be one of the ones to help do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Co-host, uh, Sylvia. Yeah, my people out there, stop throwing trash on the floor. Pick up your trash when you drop something, put it in the garbage rece receptacle, or better yet, carry a, a, either a, a plastic bag in your car or a paper bag in your car where you can put all your trash. When you get to a place where there's a trash can, please put it in a trash can so that the people who pick up the trash can find it all in one place. And please stop being so nasty when the trash can is there, you just drop it very close and say, well, it's not my job, somebody got to do it. This is a collective effort. All of us are responsible for keeping our continents clean. All of us are responsible for making sure that the, uh, the, the whole continent is clean. We have to place the garbage where it's supposed to. You don't sleep outside, do you? You sleep on a bed because the bed was meant for you to sleep in. So the garbage trash, the trash cans out there are meant for you to put your trash in that garbage so that when the garbage pickers put it up, they know what to do with the trash. May God bless our world. Thank you so much. And this plane will land in Houston, Texas, where Reverend Pam has the last word. Yes, uh, you know, in Texas, we say don't mess with Texas. You drop trash, <laughs> You're gonna drop money. They will take your money. So we don't drop trash in Texas. I'm sure a lot of you have seen that that slogan. Our 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 uh, team said, "Don't mess with Texas." So I will say, "Don't mess with Africa." Clean up behind yourself. And if your children are no longer kids, stop cleaning up behind them. Teach them how to clean. And when they grow up, they'll be clean human beings. That's what Proverbs 22 6 say. Over to you, Niaso. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for coming on board today. And Natasha, please be more regular. We want you as often as we can see you because we, we want to see the beauty of Rwanda through you and onto Africa. Thank yeah. you all very much. Have a Thank great you. week. And please, Thank you. You next Sunday. Yeah. 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 Stew, yeah. stew, stew, but no spices. We just be Thank stew. You. Bye -bye, Thank, Thank you. I'll make sure I extend the message to bring yeah. friends, at, you Thanks. know, bring friends next time. Thank, yeah, you. thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Please bring them. Bye.